Now, Hong Kong is increasing its crackdown on political dissent. It's offering a reward of 110,000 euros each for information that leads to the arrest of eight exiled pro-democracy activists. Hong Kong's chief executive, John Lee, warned the prominent activists on Tuesday that they would live in fear unless they hand themselves in and they would be pursued even in the foreign countries where they have found refuge, he said. The Chinese government, too, is accused using the seven men and one woman of anti-China activities and of seeking to destabilise Hong Kong. And we're joined now by Finn Lau, one of those eight activists targeted by the Hong Kong authorities. He's a leader of the 2019 pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong and he joins us now from London. I'd like to thank you so much for speaking to us today. Uh, China is accusing you of engaging in anti-China activities aimed at destabilising Hong Kong and of acting as a pawn for external anti-China forces. Can I ask you, will you return to Hong Kong to defend yourself against these charges? Uh, I will not return to Hong Kong unless there is a, well, independent judiciary system as well as a proper balance of power. In Hong Kong right now, we don't have any kinds of rule of law, especially after the 2020 promulgation of the uh, Draculian National Security Law in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's leader has been quite explicit. He's saying, if you don't turn yourself in, you will live in fear. What's your response to that? Well, uh, to be honest, I do not live in fear. Rather, I try to keep to uh, keep on fighting uh, on behalf of Hong Kongers, especially overseas. After the 2020 promulgation of the NSL, well, we have facing uh, more and more transnational repression, as well as local uh, crushing of civil liberties, uh, civil uh, uh, liberties, uh, rule of law, autonomy and democracy. That's why it is very important for us to continue to fight. So that kind of bounty or reward will not deter us at all. But are you not worried at all that this arrest warrant will affect uh, your personal safety even outside of Hong Kong? Well, uh, ironically, because back in 2020, I have been uh, wounded once already. So that has somehow elevated uh, my, uh, I would say, my level of determination to continue to fight. So after three to four years of fighting overseas, I have no fear at all. And I would say that this uh, new warrant and so-called bounty is a badge of honour. In what ways do you think, though, that this arrest warrant could affect you and your your your, your everyday life? I'm, I'm thinking about sort of freedom of movement, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, there there is a uh, I would say there are several implications. For example, uh, well, of course, uh, it may discourage some other uh, political dissidents of Hong Kong. Uh, from uh, continuing to fight for the uh, future of Hong Kong. That may be one of the potential impacts. However, having said that, well, many people who have uh, went into exile, we are uh, trying to keep on fighting. So, uh, so I would say it's a little bit complicated on that issue. On the other hand, well, uh, I would say that because of the suspension of, of extradition treaties between Hong Kong and a number of democratic countries like Germany, uh, UK, US and other countries. That's why uh, the Hong Kong authorities are so desperate or, may, or maybe somehow frustrated uh, because of fail, failing to extradite uh, political activists like myself back to Hong Kong. So that's, these are some of the implications. You're very clear when you say we will keep on fighting. Can I ask you, are you in touch with any of the other uh, seven activists affected uh, by these warrants? And, and do they feel the same, if you, if, they, if you are in touch with them, do they feel the same way that you do? Yes, I have been in touch with, uh, well, most of those uh, being affected. Uh, well, so we are more or less on the same page. On the other hand, well, I would say that uh, after this incident, it somehow gives more solidarity uh, or, or even unity among different uh, civil society organizations. So right now we have a dozen of joint statements or joint letters co-signed by a number, more, more than a dozen of uh, CSO around the world uh, coming across different countries. 
Hong Kong pro-democracy activist Finn Lau. Thank you so much for speaking to us on DW today. Thank you.